Hi, this is Mike Wardinsky with NatureMike.com, and today I'm going to show you how to export your photos from Adobe Lightroom Classic. So here we are in the grid view of the library module, and I'm in a quick collection, and I've got a few photos within this co quick collection that I want to export. So right now I have the first photo selected, and if I want to export all of these photos, all I have to do is hold the shift key and click on the last photo. And now they're all selected. So there's a couple of different ways we could go about exporting these, and I'm going to walk you through a few of them. Uh, number one, if you're in the library module and you want to export all the selected photos, all you have to do is navigate down to the lower left hand of the screen to the export button and click export. And that brings up the export dialog. But before we get into the dialog, I'm going to show you a few other ways to do the export. Now this, these next methods, it doesn't matter if you're in the library mode or the develop mode. So let's go up to file, export, and that also brings up the export dialog box. Now one last way, go back to the grid view. If I control click on a Mac or right click on a PC, I'll get this menu. And then within this menu, I can go to export and click on export once more and that will also bring up the export dialog box. So now that we're in the export dialog, it's time to go through a few different options. The first thing we need to do is tell Lightroom where we want to export our photos to. So typically I'll navigate to this drop down menu and choose specific folder. And I could choose my desktop or home folder or any of these other options, but typically I'll just go to a specific folder and then I'll be able to choose where I want to save those photos in this dialog box. Right now I want to put them on the desktop, so I'm going to navigate over here, choose desktop, and click choose. Now I don't want to flood my desktop with all these different photos, so the next thing I'm going to do is put them into a subfolder, and we'll just call this Mike's export. And I could add this back to my catalog, but I don't want to add the, these photos back to my catalog because they're already in there, so why add them a second time? Moving along, we have the option to rename these photos. I can check rename, and then under rename, I have the option to give it a custom name. I can do a custom name and a sequence. So since I'm exporting multiple photos, it might be a good idea to do a custom name plus a sequence. So I'll choose that. And let's call this photos for print. And our start number is one. And right down here where it says example, you'll see the first image will be called photos for print one, the next one will be called photos for print two, and so on and so forth. The next box is for video. So since we're exporting photos, we don't need to worry about that right now. So I'll go ahead and close that. The next step is to choose the file settings and image sizing. So I'm gonna walk through these next two tabs together because they kind of correlate with one another depending on what you want to export for. The settings you choose here will depend on your end goal for the image. And I'll walk through a couple of scenarios here. So the most common use of photos today is online. So if you want to export a photo for the internet, you're going to want to come to image format and choose JPEG or PNG. JPEG is the most common file format on the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and choose JPEG. Then I need to choose the quality. So typically I'll choose somewhere between 70 and 80. You might think 100 is the best, but that's going to result in a rather large image file. So I might want to tone that down a little bit because you probably are not going to notice any degradation in the quality of the image, yet the file size will be dramatically smaller. I could also check the limit file size box and that will limit the file size to whatever number I type in here. So if I want to limit the number to 600 kilobytes, there I go but typically I just use the, the quality slider and I find that works pretty well. The next thing we want to look at is the color space. If you're saving for the web, it's really important to choose sRGB. One of the other color spaces might make your colors look a little off. So definitely choose sRGB. Now that we have our file settings, let's go down to image sizing. If you're saving for the web, more than likely you're going to want to resize your image. So go ahead and check resize to fit. And I typically choose the long edge, but you could choose short edge or the pixels or the percentage. Uh, but typically this is how I'm resizing my photos. 
And then if I'm saving for my website, I'm gonna save at 1,850 pixels long with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. 72 is the internet standard for resolution. And so that's what we'll use. Now let's say I wanna save these images for print. Most professional printers still want a JPEG. Some of them will take a TIFF, but most prefer a JPEG. If you're not editing the photo anymore, there's nothing wrong with sending a printer a JPEG image. Now we wanna change the quality to 100% because we wanna send them the best possible file that we can. Now you're gonna to wanna to change your color space from sRGB to one of the larger color spaces. Now I highly recommend checking in with your printer to see what they prefer, but more than likely it's gonna be the Adobe RGB color space. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And now we wanna uncheck resize because we wanna send the printer the biggest file that we can. And we also wanna change this resolution. Typically it's gonna be 240 or 300, again, depending on the, the printer. So check in with them before you actually export your photos. That way you know how to send them the best possible image for them to work with. Now let's talk about some of the other settings. If I wanna edit one of these photos in Photoshop or another e image editor, I might wanna save them as a TIFF. And I'll leave the compression to none. And my color space for TIFF files is typically gonna be Adobe RGB or Profoto. Profoto is the largest color space the only issue with Profoto is most devices and printers will not be able to display all of the colors within that color space. And then bit depth, if I'm gonna be processing this photo some more, I'm gonna leave this at 16 bits. If I was done with the photo and wasn't gonna process it anymore, I can knock that down to eight bits. But you always wanna keep this as high as possible. And now we have image sizing. Again, I'm gonna leave that, uh, the resize off and the resolution is going to be at 240 or 300. Lastly, if I wanted to export these photos to bring into another Lightroom catalog, I could export them as a DNG or even the original file. And so if I click original, it's going to zero all my other options and I'm ready to go. Output sharpening, I typically don't use out output sharpening and you notice it's grayed out right now and that's because I'm still set to original. So I'm gonna take this up to TIFF and all these settings look good. And now I could choose sharpen, but I don't sharpen within Lightroom because there's not really a lot of options and you can't really see how it's looking here. So I'll do all of my sharpening afterwards in Photoshop. One thing I did want to mention though, is if you're going to sharpen, you can choose if you want to sharpen for the screen, matte paper, or glossy paper. So make sure you go ahead and choose whatever format your image is going to. Next we have metadata. Now I do make some adjustments here and it's typically all I want to export is my copyright only. I don't want any GPS data or camera info getting exported when I export the photos, just my copyright. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. Next is watermarking. You can watermark your photos right from Lightroom. And if you check this, you'll get some options here. But typically, I'll do it, I'll go ahead and do my watermarking within Photoshop. So I'll leave that unchecked for now. And post-processing, I typically leave this set to do nothing. You could open up Photoshop or another editor afterwards, but Typically I'll do that manually. So after this point, we're ready to hit export. But if I decided I like these settings and I'd like to be able to easily do this in the future without having to go through every single tab, I can create a preset over here. And so if I click add, I'll call this Mike's demo preset and under, I'll, I'll save it under my user presets and click create. And you see here it is popped up and I just noticed I spelled my name wrong, but that's okay. And now we're ready to hit export. We'll get the dialog box in the left hand corner saying it's gonna export 17 files. That's gonna take a few seconds to do so. And once it's finished, we'll be able to look on my desktop and see all 17 of these photos in one happy parent folder. So I'll go ahead and fast forward this a little bit. Okay, so here we are on the on my desktop. And if I look in the uh, on the right hand side, here's my folder that I exported from Lightroom called Mike's Export. And if I click on it, 
here are all of my photos. Photos for print 1 through 17. And I can click on them and, and take a look. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Make sure you subscribe to this channel as well as to my blog at www.naturemike.com. Take care and stay safe.